Ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. On this week's edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, tips for preventing bovine respiratory disease, plus using genomics to increase feed efficiency. And now, NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen with host Kevin Oxner. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Kevin Oxner. Thanks for joining us. Topping this week's cattle industry news, progress is being made on raising the Japanese age restriction on U.S. beef. The U.S. Trade Representative says the Japanese Food Safety Committee is issuing a recommendation to lift the age restriction on U.S. beef imports from 20 months and under to 30 months and under. The recommendation will go to the Japanese Health Ministry, who will accept public comments before the change can be implemented. The proposed change applies to beef imports from the U.S., Canada, France, Spain, and the Netherlands. The Japanese restrictions on beef were put in place after a case of BSE was confirmed in the United States in 2003. Kent Bacchus, Associate Director of Legislative Affairs for the National Cattlemen's Beef Association, says lifting the restriction is a step in the right direction for the U.S. beef industry. This last week we were encouraged to see that the Japanese Food Safety Commission Prion Subcommittee made the recommendation to the Food Safety Commission that they should move from a 20-month age restriction to a 30-month age restriction on beef imports from the United States, Canada, and France and the Netherlands. This is important for U.S. cattlemen because not only does it expand market access for us, but we're going to be able to sell more beef at a more affordable price into Japan. Uh, you know, this will not only increase our beef sales, but it also strengthens, strengthens our position on the need for more science-based trade regulations. Here in the studio to talk more about what the relaxed Japanese age restriction means for the U.S. beef industry is Phil Sang, President and CEO of the U.S. Meat Export Federation. Phil, thanks for coming to the Good show. Good to be here. Well, you know, Japan, uh, Japan has been evaluating this change in policy for some time now. Give us an update on the latest. Well, recently uh, Japan just announced that they're going to go into a comment period. This is after they've had seven sessions of their Prion subcommittee looking at the risk involved. They'll have about a month's uh, comments that will be received at that point. Then the Food Safety Commission will look at these comments, and then based on that, after about a 10-day uh, period, they'll remand those comments and their report to the Ministry of Health in Japan, mm -hmm. who will then go ahead and go ahead and have uh, uh, about 10 different sessions, listening sessions around the country. And at that point in time, after we've had a plan audit here in the United States, there should be an announcement from the Japanese opening up that market a little further. That's great news. So you're, you've got lots of feet on the ground there and have been uh, close to this. What's been the, the reaction in Japan? Well, the reaction has been extremely positive in Japan. Mm -hmm. I think number one is when we take a look at the trade in Japan, the retailers, the food service industry, uh, they've been ecstatic about the fact that they're going to be able to get more product into that market. Beef is expensive now, and with the 40% duty or theory you have on beef, it's very expensive. I think uh, when we take a look at the stock of the various uh, companies that have been involved, all their stock went up when there was an announcement mm -hmm. they were moving forward on this. And the consumer and the press reaction has been very, very positive. So I think all the way around, a lot of the work that had been expended with checkoff dollars and trying to uh, show the We Care campaign and how much we care about uh, the consumers and care about our cattle and our production systems over here, this has made a huge difference in Japan. So Japanese, uh, the Japanese market has always been known for high value market and I'd be interested to know what's your sense in terms of the cuts that we'll see an increase in volume in and more importantly, what are the biggest opportunities for U.S. beef industry? Well, Japan has always been a, a chuck market. I mean, the, the, the four quarter has always been very big in the Japanese market, but it's kind of interesting because with the 20 month plateau that we've had here over the last five years, uh, the upscale restaurants, it's been hard for them to procure prime product and, and higher choice type product because of the feeding situation. So we're going to see, uh, I think, a, a real interest by the Japan food service sector looking at some of our middle meats and some of these types of things. On the other hand, another area that a lot of people don't realize but has some of the biggest margins for the industry is the variety meats market. Hmm. Japan is a major consumer of beef tongue, of beef variety meats, of mountain chain tripe, some of these things. So what we see on both sides of it, from the variety meats all the way to the top quality meats, in addition to the chuck items, 
uh, that's going to be going to Japan at a much more, uh, with much more velocity than we've had in the past. And at a high level, what do you think this means to the U.S. beef industry? Well, it's going to be significant to the U.S. beef industry. Even now, when we take a look at uh, the Japanese market with the 20-month restriction, just over the last two months, we've already eclipsed Mexico as being the largest destination for our product. So what, what we see here with, with the value component that goes on with the Japanese market and also with the, uh, with the tremendous desire to have more product into that market, it's going to be very positive for the U.S. beef industry. It's going to be extremely positive. Well, thank you so much for coming to the show and for all you've done to open up this new opportunity. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Always a pleasure. For more information on the Japanese age restrictions on U.S. beef or the U.S. Meat Export Federation, just log on to our website at cattlemantocattlemen.org. Feed efficiency is a buzzword in today's cattle industry, especially given today's feed and forage prices. Raising cattle that are feed efficient is sometimes something every producer strives for, but is often very difficult to measure. A new USDA-funded program called the National Program for the Genetic Improvement of Feed Efficiency in Beef Cattle is collecting data in hopes of identifying specific genetic traits that promote feed efficiency. This new information will offer producers unique tools for selecting cattle that perform better and generate more profit. We haven't done much um, over time to change um, feed efficiency in beef cattle, either maintenance of beef cows or efficiency of growing animals in the feeding sector. Um, and so we think there's a, a great opportunity for our business to make some dramatic improvements over time um, from a genetics perspective um, to decrease cost of production and improve um, our product and, and output of that product in the beef value chain. Coming up, part two of our feed efficiency series, where we'll take a deeper look at the role genomics is playing in selecting for and producing more efficient beef cattle. One challenge for the beef industry is helping consumers understand how steaks, roasts, and hamburgers get from the ranch to the dining room table. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Brian Baxter has more on an informative event that gives people a chance to see firsthand all the steps along the beef production value chain. An enthusiastic busload of individuals recently went on the trip of a lifetime. They took part in the Gate to Plate Tour, a two-day journey across New Mexico that highlighted all aspects of the beef industry. The Gate to Plate Tour was established by the New Mexico Beef Council and uh, as a way of trying to educate uh, the more urban people about the production of beef. A picture a lot of times is worth a thousand words and when you actually are able to, to be there and see it, see it working, it really is a good educational tool. Reporters, retailers, civic leaders, and others took part in the tour funded by Beef Checkoff Dollars. They all got an up-close look at the hard work that goes into producing a safe beef product. I think there's a tendency in America to believe that agribusiness is nameless, faceless, corporate conglomerates, and it's people, it's families, uh, hard-working families, and it, uh, it's a good reminder that uh, this country is fed and clothed with the hard work of families. If you realize these are people, uh, this is their living, uh, it's, it's the land that they work and they care a great deal about the land and the success of their business and uh, the livestock. The New Mexico Gate to Plate Tour is one of many similar events being held in several states to help tell the beef story. One of the primary missions of the checkoff is to promote beef and to promote the industry and uh, you know, I think it's a really good opportunity for people that maybe have know nothing about the industry to really see what we do and why we do it. By explaining the production practices that lead to a high quality beef product, the aim is to build consumer confidence and protect future beef demand. I'm Brian Baxter reporting for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. For more information on the New Mexico Gate to Plate Tour or other similar events, just visit our website at cattlemantocattlemen.org. Ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. The exciting thing about having a genetic selection tool for feed intake is the ability to actually select on profit. The role genomics can play in improving the feed efficiency of beef cattle. Plus, from water to wildlife, the steps one Montana family is taking to preserve the natural resources on their operation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. You're watching NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen on RFD-TV. 
Wrap up your fall projects with the value and performance of a versatile 5D or 5E series utility tractor. For a limited time, get 0% financing for 60 months, plus $1,500 cash off with the purchase of two implements. Working a large acreage, small farm, or ranch, a 5D will tackle all your seasonal chores. Tougher chores? Power up with a new 5E. Either way, you save. But don't wait. As the season ends, so does this offer. No storm is too powerful for New Purina wind and rain storm minerals, formulated with ultimate weather resistance. That means more minerals in the feeder and available to your cattle. Wind and rain storm minerals provide more consistent intake and balanced mineral nutrition to optimize herd health and breedback rates. See the difference at your local Purina dealer or visit CattleNutrition.com. Wind and rain storm minerals, another way Purina is building better cattle. Quality matters to us because we're entrusted with the safe transportation of animals. Those animals can represent generations of hard work. It's up to us to deliver the goods that drive the beef industry. We link all the segments of the beef industry together, passing the torch of quality from one business to the next. Consumers count on us to bring the quality that starts on the family ranch to their home. I'm proud of what we'll do here today. Get your boots on the bay for the 2013 Annual Convention and NCBA Trade Show. Join me, J.D. Alexander, for Boots on the Bay as we attend important industry meetings and kick back for some fun with our fellow cattlemen and women at the Cattlemen's Beach Party featuring the Beach Boys. You won't want to miss the Hot Havana Nights after party with the Bellamy Brothers. For more information, visit BeefUSA.org. So pack up your boots, I'll see you in Tampa Bay. Welcome back. For cattlemen, there's no doubt losing the battle on animal health is not an option. And year in and year out, bovine respiratory disease, or BRD, is the single most costly disease we as cattlemen face. But there are several valuable tools to successfully manage BRD, as we learn from Cattlemen and Cattlemen reporter Matt Fleck. From state to state, no matter which cattle operation you visit, you'll find one manager after another customizing on-arrival management solutions to control bovine respiratory disease, or BRD, on their operation. And for those producers with an on-arrival solution already in place, veterinarians know as well as anyone that it can have a large impact on their client's bottom line. It is extremely important for an on-arrival treatment plan. Basically, the less stress we can put on them cattle, the better off we are by giving them a on-arrival antibiotic. We're putting ourselves one step ahead of the game. Once animals get BRD, it's extremely difficult for them to catch up with their healthy pen mates. BRD management is one of the most important investments producers make. Costly performance losses due to BRD can have a serious impact on the profitability of an operation. So working with a veterinarian to implement a solid BRD management strategy to keep cattle healthy and thriving is that much more important. BRD is a huge issue. It's definitely uh, probably the biggest issue in our industry. Um, some would quote uh, that it costs us a billion dollars a year. Uh, I think it's probably right around that number is accurate. Uh, that's a lot of money that, that uh, one disease is, is causing uh, waste in our industry and uh, that is obviously passed on to the consumer, which is also an issue. In fact, the threat of BRD is big enough that many producers are now turning to a three-pronged management solution to help control and treat this costly disease. It's what Pfizer Animal Health calls BRD Management Solutions. BRD Solutions is unique in the fact that it is so comprehensive. It offers broad spectrum from Draxon to Exceed to Advocin, uh, especially with Draxon having the control claim for mycoplasma. It offers duration and exceed in Draxon. It offers short withdrawal time in Avacyn, and it offers uh, extremely high efficacy across all three products. The Pfizer portfolio of antimicrobials has worked wonderful for our clinic. It gives customers different tools in their toolbox on way to treat, uh, or treat BRD in cattle. Uh, the, the best part of it is probably the long-term extended uh, 
duration of the antibiotics, of the different antibiotics, also the low dose and easy syringability of all of the products. Most of our clients, the first line of treatment is Draxin coming off of the semi at processing time. Um, then we're following up with Exceed or Advisin. Jared Korn of Plains, Texas, knows firsthand the damage caused by BRD. But by working with Pfizer Animal Health over the past few years, Korn has implemented BRD management solutions and taken his operation to the next level. After Draxon, we, you know, obviously on arrival, we come back with uh, our first treatments exceed. We go with Advisin. We use uh, very little and there's the number one factor why we don't use a lot of Avacyn is because the prior treatments are so successful. The success of the Draxin and getting it in them uh, right on arrival and, and turning those cattle out um, it is paramount when you start computing the days to sale. I mean, it's, it, that right there is the X factor that, that makes it roll. It's not even in the same discussion to the issues we used to have. I mean. We'd pull 20, 30 head uh, daily, and now we're doing good to pull three or four on, the on, on an increase in numbers. It is a rule of thumb around here, 14 days before you go back in the cattle. Um, we have full confidence that, uh, that the drug is still in them, and these products will give you the structure if, if you use the man if you'd manage the cattle correctly if you have a good structure with this type of cattle uh, with this type of protocol that your success will, will be there corn is not the only one that has had great success with Draxon on arrival producers and veterinarians throughout central Kansas have also implemented the Pfizer antimicrobial portfolio into their animal health programs with great success we use um, Draxon on about 90% of the cattle that come through this place. The one thing we really like is having the longer treatment intervals and the, the Draxon allows us cattle to get on feed and, and we have a lot less health issues. Draxon makes it a real time management tool. Treating those cattle up front with um, Draxon benefits us in the fact that it's in their system long enough that it allows those calves to get up on feed. and and if they're eating, they're not getting sick. Our experience with Draxon is, is, is it more than pays for itself. We'll learn more about bovine respiratory disease solutions from the experts at Pfizer Animal Health when we return. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Draxon, clearly Cattlemen's number one choice to fight BRD. Here's why. Nothing is more depressing in a stalker business as the doctor and doctor. And you still have your chronics, you still have your death loss. And with Draxon, we just found out, that, especially with microplasts, you just had to be there to see the results. And the evidence backs up what most cattlemen already know. Draxon cuts chronics and mortalities by 70%. So talk to your veterinarian and check the online calculator at Draxon.com. You'll see. Nothing gives you more for your money when you're fighting BRD. Just a great antibiotic. Very, very effective. Don't let the price tag scare you. It's a no-brainer. You just use it. Do not use in female dairy cattle 20 months of age or older. Do not use in calves to be processed for veal. Draxon has a pre-slaughter withdrawal time of 18 days. Please visit Draxon.com or call 1-888-DRAXON for more information. I'm an NCBA member. I'm an NCBA member because I think uh, as an advocacy group, NCBA has done some great things for our industry and I kind of feel compelled to, to give back some of what they've done for us. I'm an NCBA member because it's the organization that stands up to, for the industry that I love and will allow my family to continue and to be a part of this great industry. Because this organization is looking out for cattle producers. I'm an NCBA member because NCBA doesn't pick and choose what issues it works on. It works on every issue, every day, on behalf of all the cattlemen across the country. They understand what makes our cow-calf business profitable. Join me and thousands of other cattlemen across the country. Join me today. Join me today. 
Join NCBA today and receive a new member gift while supplies last. Head to BeefUSA.org and enter the promo code C2C or call 866-USA-BEEF and mention C2C. Welcome back. Let's return to reporter Matt Fleck, who's learning more about ways to prevent bovine respiratory disease. Producers and veterinarians agree. Experience shows Draxon's long-acting 14-day duration of treatment not only offers health protection for the cattle, but also savings in time, labor, and treatment costs for the producer. Draxon helps with feed efficiency by allowing the animal to get feeling better to get back on feed quicker and with Draxon the return to to consumption intake of water it's going to help your feed efficiency as soon as those those sicker cattle get back on the program they're going to catch up in the old days we used to run through the shoot three times in a row every day and we weren't that efficient because we would they would succumb from other diseases and other issues going through the shoot that many times in, in three day period we're using Draxon with a one shot and the efficacy is there and the duration is there. Offering an additional seven-day duration and a different mode of action, Exceed gives producers another long-acting antimicrobial option for fighting BRD, and thus a better shot at knocking out BRD and getting cattle on feed fast. Tell you the truth, the, the product that I'm the most sold on of everything is Exceed. That's, that's really what I'm operating. I'm really geek on Exceed. I'm just really impressed with it. Exceed has been a real great tool for us. We buy all calves that are, are not weaned and Exceed helps so much I can give them this product and I can be feeding cattle and take care of the cattle rather than going out and looking for sick calves and one, I can more or less just relax it for the first eight days I'm not going to have a sick calf. Fortunately for beef producers Pfizer Animal Health also offers a third antimicrobial with a short withdrawal period, giving them an additional line of defense against BRD. Bringing Advocent on has been big for Pfizer because it gives us a one dose short withdrawal product to use as a fat treatment in the feedlot. Um, for instance, you've got a pen of cattle that are 10 days prior to slaughter and you have uh, a, a calf come down with BRD in that group. You can give Advison knowing that you still got 10 days to slaughter and it's only got a four day meat withhold. We were introduced to Advison about 45 days ago by our veterinarian. The benefits of Advison, I like the two cc's per hundred weight, just a general short day withdrawal date and just getting the calf treated and get back to the pen. Having a four day withdrawal on Advison allows us to, to be able to rail cattle quicker and, and, and manage the money of that calf. The variety of the Pfizer Animal Health portfolio of antimicrobials gives producers an advantage in keeping cattle protected from BRD. Producers and veterinarians agree it's had a big impact on operations across the country. I do feel like we have um, the most variety in our portfolio and the most choices of any uh, company on the market. When you look at Draxon, Exceed, Advison, you've got broad spectrum, you've got duration in two of those products, you've got short, very short withdrawal in one of those products, and you have reams of data showing the efficacy of all of them. So I think it comes together in a very nice package. Biggest advantage I see of using those in, I think probably just the consistency of the Pfizer network. When, when we have those and we have a consistent program with one company, it makes it easier for myself as a veterinarian and, and for my feed yard clients and even my cow-calf clients too if we're using it in a stalker situation. There's no doubt that using a BRD solutions type strategy on arrival and for treatment uh, results in more money in the pocket of the producer. We've got data to prove that. Uh, and it's not just one trial. You know, it's been repeated over and over and over again. While each antimicrobial from Pfizer Animal Health offers tremendous health benefits to high-risk cattle, the comprehensive BRD management solutions continue to put cattle producers one step ahead, keeping cattle on feed and ultimately putting money in their pockets. We have expanded and with the way that the, the Draxon and the Exceed and the Advacin have stabilized a part of my business has allowed me to grow my pens. I've bought more land, acquired more equipment, and basically uh, more infrastructure and better infrastructure. The Pfizer team has come into my operation 
and help on the daily management side has helped me put money back into my pocket. I'm Matt Fleck, reporting for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. To learn more about BRD Management Solutions, log on to PfizerAH.com or head to our website at cattleman to cattleman .org. We'll be right back. When it comes to versatility on your operation, nothing beats a John Deere D-Series skid steer. They're not only great for cleaning and feed chores, but with John Deere Worksite Pro attachments, you can tackle just about any job thrown your way. You asked for versatility, and John Deere delivered. These rock-solid machines are built to last. See your dealer today. There's something wrong. His head is down. He's clearly stressed. He's worried sick about BRD. That's why there's prescription Zactran for BRD treatment and control in high-risk cattle. Get a rapid response plus 10-day treatment and control in a single dose so you can stop worrying and get back to business. For use in cattle only, do not treat cattle within 35 days of slaughter. Because a discard time in milk has not been established, do not use in female dairy cattle 20 months of age or older or in calves to be processed for veal. The effects of Zactran on bovine reproductive performance, pregnancy and lactation have not been determined. Don't worry yourself sick. Talk to your veterinarian about a real alternative for BRD treatment and control. Because it's critical, it's Zactran. From Marielle, a leading animal health company. Welcome back. Leave the land better than when you found it. That's the motto many cattlemen live by each and every day. And one Montana family is living out their love for the land by taking steps to preserve the natural resources on their operation. Reporter Scott Hoke takes us to Montana to introduce us to the Region 5 winner of the Environmental Stewardship Award. It's early morning and cattle are on the move at Bold Ranch in central Montana. For more than three decades, Robert and Annette Bold have been raising cattle, and their son Spencer and twin girls Alexandra and Reagan help them run things today. Both Robert and Annette are former teachers who decided to return to their ranching roots. Both Robert and I grew up on a farm ranch, not too far from here, approximately 100 miles probably at the most. I think once ranching is in your blood, it's really hard to get away from it. We run a cow-calf operation. Uh, in the past, we've been predominantly Angus. This is the first year we're doing any crossbreeding away from Angus using Charlet. On the feeder calf side, we do custom feeding. We also grow our own. On the small grain side, we raise wheat and barley. The grain goes into cattle feed. So the barley is a, it's not a cash crop. The wheat is. We're, we're not wheat feeders, we grow cattle, we don't finish cattle here. From the beginning, saline seep has been the biggest challenge for the bulls. Their land contained over 400 acres that was almost unusable because of high salt content. The bulls fought to reclaim the land by first spreading granular gypsum over the affected area, and then seeding a variety of plants that had high salt tolerance. In 1980, uh, we began to do reclamation work here. We didn't know uh, exactly what we were doing because this was the introduction and discovery of technology on how to treat some of these areas. So we experimented with over two dozen grasses, forbs, and legumes to find some that would take. But we've taken this from less than 10% cover to well over 90% cover. And for us, it's become a productive area where you've gone from nothing other than snow white and the dust blowing in the summertime, like in July and August, to this type of a cover. The soil itself, when Dad came here, Mom and Dad came here, it was really poor condition. Uh, and since then, they've done a considerable amount to reclaim it with grasses and mosses and even different farming techniques to reclaim it. And it's worked out very well. They've increased their herd by a considerable amount. Managing water is a priority in this part of Montana. 
No-till farming is one way to retain soil moisture, and Bold Ranch was one of the first in central Montana to adopt this conservation practice. They also partnered with NRCS on projects such as installing more than 11 miles of pipeline to supply water to pastures that had never been able to support livestock. They're always willing to investigate and try new techniques and technologies that are out there. When you have a family like the Bold family who tries something new and is willing to work with the producers in the community, it helps get that technology out there to, to test it and make sure it's something that's going to work in our environment. Robert is a, a very forward-thinking um, individual. There's something new out there and he feels that it's beneficial. He is not afraid to try it. And I guess by the same token, neither am I. It's just kind of fun to share the information. If it works for us, it's kind of nice to help somebody else out too. People will call our house and they'll ask for advice and we'll help them any way that we can or we'll give suggestions if we see something going wrong. I always see someone call up and ask my dad, well, what do you think of this? Should I plant this or how did your triticale kale turn out? You know, what's your opinion on this? And he's always just willing to pass on knowledge. He just loves to share his, whatever he learns. The efforts of the Bold family haven't just helped the ranch. The wildlife here is thriving as well. And from crops to cattle, water to wildlife, the Bold family takes whatever steps necessary to be as environmentally sound as possible. The environmental stewardship is very important to our family. You can't gain anything from the land unless you keep it up the best that you can. And for future generations, you have to try to keep it the best. I find pride in, in being the fourth generation that we've made it this far and hopefully, hopefully just keep being able to pass it from generation to generation. It's kind of cool to carry on a family legacy. Um, I don't think many families can do that. And so to be able to pass it on is just something really special. I think what we've accomplished in the time that we've been here, I'm just really happy with it. We're just a steward here for such a short period of time. So you gotta have that goal where you try to leave it so much better than when you got it. If you've done a good job, you've got something to leave the next generation. The Bold family believes in the work NCBA does every day to protect their way of life. Won't you join them as members of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association? There's never been a better time to join. If you join right now, you'll receive a free 100 milliliter bottle of Dectamax injectable from Pfizer Animal Health. And if you join NCBA as well as your state association, you'll receive a 200 milliliter bottle of Dectamax injectable. But you must join both at the same time to get in on this special limited time offer. Joining is easy, just give us a call at 1-866-USA-BEEF or you can email us at c 2 c at beef.org. Don't go away, we'll be right back. I'm an NCBA member. I'm an NCBA member because NCBA, they look at the facts, they look at the history, and they look what's good for the industry. It's important to be NCBA members just because of what NCBA does. They keep us informed about a lot of things that are going on nationwide. The reason we're an NCBA member is we think that it's the best voice that the cattle people have. We think without the NCBA, why, we'd be in hot water back in Washington. I think the staff at NCBA and uh, the way they're structured do a tremendous job of representing me in Washington. I'm an NCBA member because their policy is based on sound science and common sense. Join me today. Join me today. Join NCBA today and receive a new member gift while supplies last. Head to BeefUSA.org and enter the promo code C2C or call 866-USA-BEEF and mention C2C. I'm looking forward to having Vista once back. We weren't able to find an equivalent product. I think our practice will be very quick to adopt Vista when it comes back. All of my veterinary colleagues have all talked about the product coming back. We're glad to have Vista back in the product line. Cattlemen that we work with will be glad to have the product. We have a lot of producers. They're excited about it coming back. Yeah, can I recommend Vista once? Yeah, that's going to go right back in the cooler and uh, it goes right back in the cans.
Welcome back. Feed efficiency is a hot topic in today's cattle market, especially with the record high feed prices. Last week, we learned about a federally funded grant through the USDA National Institute of Food and Agriculture, or NEFA, that is working on new technology to improve feed efficiency in the cattle industry. This week, Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Matt Fleck takes us back to the U.S. Meat Animal Research Center in Clay Center, Nebraska, and shows us how genomics can be used to improve feed efficiency. Raising cattle that are feed efficient is a constant challenge for producers across all segments of the beef industry. Management practices, feed rations, and overall health programs all play a part in determining if the animals are going to be efficient. Now, scientists are looking at genomics as a way to help producers make better selection decisions. We're actually using the, uh, the USDA NEFA funding uh, to produce animals that we can gather individual animal uh, intake data on, as well as growth and body composition data when those animals are, are processed and sent to market. So we can actually use those data and those phenotypes uh, to actually do genomic studies, which is to try to study and identify the regions of the genome that control the genetic variability in these traits and be able to come up with prediction equations that we can use to come up with molecular estimates of, of breeding value or molecular EPDs that producers can use to select animals for increased feed efficiency. The National Program for the Genetic Improvement of Feed Efficiency in Beef Cattle includes 21 scientists from 11 different institutions, as well as several producers and breed associations who are in the process of gathering data from over 8,000 animals. But our hope through this project is to be able to develop uh, genomic predictors, really indicator traits of an animal's genetic propensity for feed intake and or feed efficiency. And as we think about genomic selection tools, they really lend themselves to the types of traits that are expensive or difficult to measure. And feed intake certainly fits that. Animals have a significant amount of genetic variation due to the particular combinations of genes that they have that actually impact the amount of feed that they need to, to grow um, and, and get them to market weight. Once the genomic information is gathered, it's incorporated into expected progeny differences, or EPD, calculations. This improves the accuracy of EPDs for economically relevant traits, such as feed efficiency, and also allows for earlier selection decisions. We hope to come out with more accurate EPDs or EPDs for traits which before we didn't have EPDs for, something like feed intake or feed efficiency. And that's enabled, of course, by genomics. And of course, feed intake or feed efficiency is one of those key economic drivers from the cost side of the equation. So the exciting thing about having a genetic selection tool for feed intake is the ability to actually select on profit. So selecting on optimum values of output, like growth, and input, like feed intake, and being able to put those in some kind of economic index and actually select for the animals that are most profitable uh, given somebody's breeding objective. The project's cutting-edge genomic work has seed stock producers Scott and Kim Ford very excited about the future of the industry. They believe it's something that will be a huge benefit to their own operation. We do what we can at this point using anecdotal data in our own herd, but if we could uh, genomically um, be able to, to see something through a DNA panel that, that's going to help us out, we definitely want to hone in on that. Genomics is a big part of what we do, and, and Kim and I have talked about this a lot, that if, if, uh, if there's tools out there that we can take advantage of to eliminate problems down the road or become more efficient, uh, we need to be embracing those tools and, and uh, take advantage of those every chance that we get. Obviously, we understand that uh, you know, we have a finite uh, amount of resources out here, and anything that we can do to become more efficient, whether it's uh, residual feed intake uh, study or fertility study or anything that we can do using genomics uh, is going to make us more efficient, not only in our operation, but as an industry. We'll have more on the role genomics plays in increasing feed efficiency in beef cattle when we return. Stay with us, we'll be right back. They're out there, lurking on your pasture. 
just waiting to infect your cattle as they graze. Cattle worms cost you money, but a Safeguard strategic deworming program allows you to deworm your cattle and lower worm burdens on your pasture, resulting in improved pregnancy rates and heavier calf weights. Plus, there's a Safeguard form for every operation. So start killing parasites where they lurk. Talk to your animal health provider today about a Safeguard strategic dewormer program. Safeguard. Think strategically. Act decisively. Fall time means sale time, and the 2012 Cowman's Kind Brangus Bull and Female Sale at Blackwater Cattle Company is just around the corner. This year's sale will include 200 true beef Brangus bulls, 20 select registered Brangus females, and 500 private treaty commercial Brangus females. There's nobody in the country that puts more emphasis on soundness of skeleton, efficiency, and pounds. The Blackwater crew produces genetically superior Brangus bulls that will put more money in your pocket. We will not waver from trying to produce the very best bulls in the breed. We stand behind these bulls 100%. The Blackwater Cattle Company fall sale will take place on November 10th at 12.30 p.m. in Lake Park, Georgia. If you're in the market for a bull that will sire calves that press the scales, produce unparalleled replacement quality females, or carcass up, make Blackwater Cattle Company your choice. We guarantee these are real beef bulls and the best in the country. For more information, call Mike at 229-232-3096 or Tracy at 979-255-4357 or visit blackwatercattlecompany.com. Welcome back. Let's return to reporter Matt Fleck in Clay Center, Nebraska, who's learning more about ways to increase feed efficiency in your herd. Dave Nichols, a seed stock producer from Bridgewater, Iowa, also sees the importance of keeping up with new breakthroughs in cattle genetics. We've used some techniques like crossbreeding, the use of uh, uh, the use of implants and some things like this, which has improved feed efficiency. But the thing about increasing feed efficiency genetically is it is a win-win situation because everyone wins. We use less grain and less feed inputs, so that, that makes it available for other animals, and these animals don't spend as long in the feedlot, so we, there's less time involved. So uh, I'm uh, 72 years old, and I am so excited that I'm going to be able to participate in DNA technology, which is going to increase female fertility increase resistance to disease and especially increase feed efficiency because I want to produce more beef at a lower price so more people can enjoy how good it tastes and we've got billions of people all over the world that need to be eating American beef. In addition to producers, many breed associations are taking notice of the new genomic work and are beginning to incorporate that technology into their own customized programs. In this summer run at the American Hereford Association, we will produce our very first uh, genomic enhanced EPD. We're currently uh, in our third year in collecting feed intake phenotypes in our young sire test program. Uh, basically what we get per year is somewhere between three and, and 400 records uh, through that program, but then we also have individual breeders that have collected those phenotypes, and that, that is obviously growing. We currently have uh, over uh, 1,500 uh, 50K genotypes on, on high accuracy animals within the Hereford breed, and I, I think uh, without question, when we launch this new uh, genomic enhanced EPD, uh, that uptake will go even exponentially faster. As technology advances, the scientists involved with this project say it's important for producers to remember that new tools are meant to work in conjunction with what's already being done on an operation. Genomic tools aren't a replacement for traditional EPDs. They're simply a means of making them more accurate by seamlessly integrating those two pieces of information together in our national cattle evaluation. It's only augmenting our traditional tools with genomic tools now. While the beef industry is just in the early stages of this genomic research, many producers believe it has the potential to be a huge benefit to the industry in the very near future. I think we've just scratched the surface on genomics and what they can offer for us as the industry. It's pretty phenomenal just to see where we've come in a short period of time and, and if we keep forging ahead, I think that we've got great, great things to come.
I've spent my entire life uh, in the purebred seed stock business and I will tell you never a point in my life has there ever been such a collaboration within the industry of everyone's coming together, they understand the importance of, of measuring these important economically relevant traits and the role that genomics is going to play in, in that in the future. Reporting from the U.S. Meat Animal Research Center in Clay Center, Nebraska, I'm Matt Flack for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. The NEFA project is funded at $1 million annually for up to five years. To learn more about the genomic work being done to improve selection or for more information on feed efficiency, just visit our website at cattleman cattleman.org or the project website at www.beefefficiency.org. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Let's face it, you don't think a lot about your trailer hitch. You use it and forget it. We understand, but at B&W, we think about it. Short nights, long hauls, never-ending chores, the unthinkable. We think about it all, so you don't have to. B&W, trusted. Glenn's worked his ranch since he was a boy. A lifetime invested raising cattle and crops and caring for the land and producing a product his urban neighbors can enjoy and trust. Well, why does he go that extra mile? So someday someone he loves can carry it on. IMI Global Third Party Verification can be your partner in helping you to market wisely and responsibly in this new world where people care where their food comes from. Real people. Cowboys are nothing if not ingenious. Jim and Norval, aliases, were backtracking one fall after the gather. By noon, they cut fresh sight of a bull. They spotted him out in the open and eased up on him. He was a short, tampered, hostile, territorial, man-eating ruler of the range. Trying to outthink our cowboys, the bull dove into a wash thick with brush and disappeared. Our brave cowboys dove in after him as the brush tore at their shirts and slashed at their faces. After 10 minutes of following the bull through this cowboy version of a maze, they regrouped. Using their cowboy mentality, they decided to build a trap. In one narrow cow tunnel, they draped a loop across the path and tied the standing end of the rope to a tree trunk. You Rika! On the first pass through the trap, they caught the bull. Then a second rope was put around his neck and tied to a trunk 15 feet further down the trail. Then the first loop was untied and leapfrogged past the second. Five more jumps brought the bull within sight of the clearing where our imaginative vaqueros intended to back the trailer and load the bull. Jim, now afoot, managed to loop the bull's head for the last leapfrog. By now, the bull was frothing, breathing like a steam engine and wild eye. Jim dropped to his hands and knees, scuttling towards the final tying spot when he heard the bull bellow, the sound of thundering hooves and branches breaking, the earth trembled. Jim didn't look back. The impact put him in orbit. He was catapulted from the thicket like a monkey shot out of a cannon. To his everlasting good fortune, just as the bull's pole hit Jim's hip pocket, the rope came tight, the bull crashed and flipped, and Jim hit the ground, minus one boot and the left sleeve of his shirt. His hat was down over his ears. Not exactly out of the Beef Quality Assurance Manual for Handling Cattle, although I'd like to see it included fully illustrated. This is Baxter Black. Come out there. Thanks, Baxter, for those bull trapping tips. Let's take a look at this week's legacy photos. This week's photos feature our Region 5 winners of the Environmental Stewardship Award from Winifred, Montana.
We'd sure like to see your farm and ranch photos as well. To submit your favorites, just visit our website at cattlemantocattlemen.org. Next week on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, the decision one Missouri family made to live the ranching dream. Plus, an inside look at the kitchen of NCBA executive chef Dave Zeno and the top reasons you should attend the 2013 Cattle Industry Annual Convention in Tampa, Florida. Well, that does it for this week's edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. We'll see you right back here next week on RFD TV.